So in this video today, I'm going to be showing you the very best games that have come out on the Mac in 2023. And this list includes huge open world AAA RPGs all the way down to small indie strategy games and everything in between. So the rules of this list is that these games must be released for macOS in one way or another. So no Windows games being run through streaming or translation layers. And they need to work on and ideally be optimized for Apple Silicon Macs, including the M1, M2 and M3 chips. The next rule is that this is a list, not a ranking. So these are just the best Mac games of 2023. But before we get started, I just wanted to talk about a fascinating connection that I discovered between Apple and the iconic Star Trek universe that goes beyond just technology. Did you know that Star Trek was a huge inspiration for Apple's co-founder Steve Wozniak? And even now, the futuristic concepts showcased in the Star Trek universe fueled his imagination and played a crucial role in shaping the innovative tech that we use and love today, inspiring us to dream big, and reach for the stars. Speaking of which, if you're looking for an excellent, completely free game to play on your Mac, then you will want to check out the sponsor of today's video, Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is a 4X MMO game set in the ever-expanding Star Trek universe. Recruit legendary characters to crew iconic ships from over 50 years of Star Trek stories and send them on missions of exploration to expand your territory. Join millions of players around the world in battles testing your strategic ability, negotiate alliances for greater gain, and harvest the galaxy's resources as you upgrade your fleet of starships. This game is continually adding new content on a monthly basis, including brand new TNG officers, including Luther Sloan, one of my favorite characters from Star Trek, a morally ambiguous and secretive intelligence operative. Or take control of Riker, a highly skilled and experienced Starfleet officer known for his strategic thinking and strong sense of duty. And also you should check out this brand new mode called Wave Defense, where players team up to defend a central point from waves of increasingly powerful enemies. Collaborate Collaboration is going to be key to success. So make sure to scan the QR code on screen right now or use my link in the description and definitely make use of the code warp speed where players can receive a free content pack containing 10 epic shards of Kirk. Captain James T. Kirk is a powerful and iconic officer that is a benefit to any ship that he's on. He provides amazing defensive stats while also providing strong buffs to any ship that he's on. Anyway, it's absolutely amazing that you can download and play this game on your Mac or PC and even take this on the go on your iPhone or Android phone too, effortlessly switching between platforms while keeping your progress intact. Make sure to install the game using my link or QR code and I'll see you among the stars in Star Trek Fleet Command. So thank you to the sponsor of this video. Now we're going to go back to Mac Gaming. So the first game is Baldur's Gate 3. Now this game has won multiple Game of the Year awards at this stage and it is definitely one of my favorite games of all time and one of the best RPGs ever made. So if you aren't familiar with this game, this is a CRPG or a computer role-playing game and it's also a tactical team-based RPG as well, which is turn-based. Now I know that doesn't necessarily sound appealing to most people. However, it's a formula that really works very well. The story is extremely engaging and very much replayable. There are loads of dialogue and quest options. And I found myself playing through this game a second time, making completely different choices and seeing very different parts of the game, which I didn't experience the first time. So there's loads to see here. And not only that, this is a fantastic multiplayer experience as well. So this game is a universal binary, so it'll work with Intel and Apple Silicon and Macs, but I do recommend running a machine with over 8GB of RAM, or you're going to struggle with later acts in this game, which are far more graphically demanding. And whilst the Porting House Alvarez have done a very good job with the Apple Silicon Mac version of this game, the Mac version tends to receive patches a little bit later than the Windows version, just be aware of this. This can affect compatibility with multiplayer, and you might want to sometimes run the Windows version through crossover if you want to guarantee multiplayer compatibility with other Windows users. Anyway, this is definitely my favorite Mac game of 2023, so make sure to check this out. So next up is the highly anticipated port of No Man's Sky, and this happens to work fantastically on the Apple Silicon Mac, whether you're running on the base M1 chip or something even more powerful like a Max or an Ultra chip too. If you've not heard of this game before, it's an action adventure survival game based on procedurally generated worlds. So there are literally trillions of planets that you can visit. All of them are going to be different and you advance basically by mining for resources, improving equipment, buying and selling resources using credits, building planetary bases and expanding space fleets. 
And what's cool is that you can fly around in space and visit any of these planets. There's so much player freedom in this game. And there have been years of development and features added to this game over the years. And it's definitely one of the best additions to the Mac gaming library. So next up is the game Armor 3, a pretty hardcore open world tactical shooter simulation game. Now this had a Mac port back in 2015, but now it's been reintroduced as an Apple Silicon native port as of this year. So what's great about this game is its commitment to realism. So it's very slow paced compared to most shooting games. It has a lot of single player content, but where it really shines is its multiplayer. Now the game can be run either as an Intel binary through the Rosetta 2 translation layer, which you can use to play online, or you can use the Apple Silicon native version, which is not available to play on multiplayer online. So the choice is really yours depending on whether you want to play multiplayer or you want to use the more optimized Apple Silicon native version and just play single player. However, if you want to play a more traditional online multiplayer fast paced shooter, then you might want to check out the next game on the list. So on the Mac, there are no current Call of Duty games which you can play online. So this game, Combat Master, is pretty much the closest that you're ever going to get. So this is a free to play first person multiplayer shooter in the vein of Call of Duty. But one of the main differences is with the actual speed of the game. So when you're running and vaulting and moving and sliding, etc., there's no loss of acceleration. And the speed of the game is very, very fast. And also the time to kill as well. So you'll often kill people in one or two shots. And basically you can expect to be killed very quickly too. But thankfully the respawning is very fast depending on the mode that you're playing on. And you're never more than a few seconds away from continuing to play the game. And you might notice that the graphics are quite rudimentary as well. And that's because this is a cross-platform mobile game. So you'll be playing with mobile users as well. But I think that this is a good thing because basically you have an advantage when you're playing on the Mac desktop. And it also means that you get very high frame rates when you're playing on a Mac. So this is actually maxed out at 60 FPS on the M1 chip. So that's the base MacBook Air. And so basically this is a very accessible game. So no matter which Apple Silicon Mac that you have, you can basically run this on the ultra quality and you're going to hit the maximum frame rate and have a very good time. So whilst this isn't the deepest game, it does have a healthy multiplayer online community. There is a level up and progression system with interesting weapons and gear to collect. And hopefully this is the game that's going to scratch that multiplayer first person shooter itch where basically no other Mac game can right now. So next up is the game Lies of P, which is a Dark souls like action role-playing game developed by NeoWiz Games and Round 8 Studios. So this takes a lot of cues from games like Sekiro, Dark Souls, Bloodborne. However, the setting is basically based on Pinocchio, but a more of a kind of sci-fi fantasy historical setting. As a Mac port, this one is pretty unique in being a simultaneous Windows console and macOS release. Not only did they make this a native ARM Apple Silicon game, it also supports advanced Metal FX features and upscaling, and it generally speaking one of the best ports of the year. And generally speaking, not only is this a very well reviewed game, it is also one of the best looking games on the Mac as well. So if you want to see more simultaneous ports like this in the future, then make sure to pick up Lies of P, easily one of the best games of 2023. So next up is Layers of Fear, a remake of the 2016 original game, which is basically a seminal first person horror game developed by Bluebe Team. You take control of an artist who has returned to a studio. His initial goal is to complete his masterpiece and what you have to do is figure out how the task should be accomplished. The game basically involves searching the environment for clues and putting together solutions to the puzzles and go around exploring this very creepy Victorian mansion looking for all of the notes and secrets and clues to figure out the full plot of this game. So this remake basically combines Layers of Fear 1 and 2 originally released in 2016 and it's basically a complete rebuild from the Unity engine to Unreal Engine 5 with all of the advanced graphical bells and whistles. Anyway, if you enjoy puzzle horror games, then make sure to check this game out for Mac. So next up, we're looking at the game Stray, which is basically a cat simulator stroke puzzle game set in a post-apocalyptic sci-fi world where humans have gone extinct. So this has been one of the most anticipated macOS releases. It's basically a third person adventure game where you control a stray cat leaping across platforms and climbing up obstacles. You wander around this very intricate, interesting environment, which is populated by zergs, which are mutated bacteria. There are a lot of puzzles involving swarms of zergs where you have to try to lead them away from the environment where you're trying to get to, and then you can circumvent them. Similarly, there are also puzzles involving sentinels, which are basically these robot watchers. 
And basically looks can be deceiving because initially it looks like a relaxing cat simulator type of game, but it can get quite stressful. It's really more of a puzzle stroke stealth game. So if you like that kind of game, then make sure to check this one out. Stray is a great addition to the Mac gaming library. So next up is Isonzo, which is a World War I multiplayer first person shooter basically set in the Italian front of World War I. Again, this is one of the very few multiplayer first person shooter games that you can play online. It's more akin to say Battlefield than it is to Call of Duty. The movement is relatively slow paced and you will die quite a lot. I died loads from this game when I tried to play this online. The game really rewards patience and accuracy and teamwork as well. So if you want that kind of game, Isonzo is definitely the one for you. So this has been played on the base M3 chip. We're playing this at medium settings and it seems to run pretty well when you're playing this online. So this game initially released last year in 2022, but it had a Mac port in 2023. It is quite an ambitious game for the kind of scope that we have here. And this is basically a sequel to earlier World War One games, including Verdun and Tannenberg made by the same developers, M2H and Black Mill Games. But this game doesn't have the biggest player base at the moment. Moment. So if you want to support this kind of game on Mac, then make sure to pick it up and to try this out and show your support for the developers and encourage more unique games like this to come out on the Mac in the future. So next up is the indie game Dave the Diver, which is basically an adventure game where you control a player called Dave, a hardworking diver as he collects fish, manages a sushi restaurant and solves quests. And the game kind of changes quite a lot as you play the game. I don't want to spoil what happens later too much, but basically you go through the game unlocking recipes to cook, attract influential customers, renovate the restaurant. There are tons of mini games which are unlocked throughout the story. And it's one of the more unique titles on the Mac. So if you're looking for a game which combines elements of management, action adventure and role playing, then this is going to be one of the more interesting games for you. It has a really interesting pixel art style and it really works well with the interesting mini games that come up later including a rhythm game and a tamagotchi style game app anyway this game was really well reviewed and well worth checking out so next up is the space adventure arcade shooter role-playing game and management game called everspace 2 so unlike everspace 1 which was a roguelike game which was designed to be repeated and played over and over again with randomized elements everspace 2 is more like a traditional rpg so if you're familiar with a game like elite this is a similar game to that or a more recent example would be something like Freelancer. This is basically an open world space combat game in the similar vein to those previous games. There's an in-depth story and long campaign and at the heart of it it's all about upgrading your ship, collecting loot, mining and really developing your character and your ships and your weapons and skills as the campaign continues. Anyway, this is a really fun game with a long campaign. It has great controls and it feels a little bit arcadey, but also quite rewarding and fun. If you want something to scratch that freelancer or even Star Citizen style itch, then this is going to be the game for you on Mac. So the next game we're looking at is Grid Legends. So this is one of the few racing games that you can get on a Mac and it's quite unique in including a very story focused career mode for the first time in the series. This was inspired by a Netflix documentary called Formula One Drive to Survive and the game translates this into more of a narrative focused experience with cutscenes and dialogue featuring professional actors. But anyway the driving itself is very solid and the graphics are absolutely beautiful and it's very well optimized for Apple Silicon Max reaching very good frame rates taking advantage of the Metal Graphics API and Metal FX and and reportedly should have good support on Mac for steering wheels like the Logitech G90 Zero and G29. So next up is Total War Pharaoh. So this is the latest entry in the Total War series and it's a historical title. And this time the game is set in the times of ancient Egypt. So if you're not familiar with the series, it basically combines grand turn-based strategy on an overworld map. And basically everything that you do in this grand strategy mode also affects the real-time gameplay too. So you can control the armies that you develop in the grand strategy and play them in real time against the enemy. So this game has got dozens of different factions and leaders to choose from, all of them with different strategies and gameplay that you can try out. 
And as with every historical Total War title, there is tons of replay value to be had. Now, quite controversially, people have had a bit of a backlash to this game because of its over monetization and under development. And Creative Assembly have basically responded to this by lowering the price of the game and promising free DLC packs. So this is a really good time to get into this game, especially because it has a decent macOS port that performs well on most Macs. And Total War is pretty good as a series for delivering these macOS ports. So if you want to try out the latest entry in a Total War series, then this is a good place to start. But you can also try older titles that work great as well. For example, Shogun 2 is one of my favorites and it still works great on Apple Silicon hardware. So next up is the game Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. So this is an isometric turn-based tactical role-playing game developed by Alcat Games, who also created the Pathfinder RPG series, including Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, which is an excellent macOS RPG as well. So inevitably, this is going to draw a lot of comparisons with a game like Baldur's Gate 3. We have a game with a lot of lore, talking, dialogue options, and then also turn-based combat based on a team. And what makes this game unique is its futuristic sci-fi fantasy setting. Also, the fact that we can have up to six party members instead of Baldur's Gate 3's four party members. Similarly, there is cooperative multiplayer gameplay as well. And one of the game's more distinguishing features is its emphasis on realm building, with the player's decisions as the titular rogue trader affecting the rest of the gameplay as they build their space empire. Anyway, this game has literally hundreds of hours of gameplay and plenty of replay value too. So you should definitely check this out if you're a fan of CRPGs on the Mac. So next up is SnowRunner. So this is the macOS port of the 2020 Windows and console game. Basically, it's an off-roading open world simulation. You have tasks to deliver cargo, complete construction projects and repairs at different locations while driving over pretty rough terrain. So this game is pretty unique. It's not like a standard and the driving game at all, there's no real racing, it's all about the simulation and terrain physics. Each of the game's regions is set after a disaster has taken place, whether a natural flood or man-made, such as a pipeline breaking. And locations are very varied, taking place in rural regions in beautiful North America or Russia. The game has a pretty huge collection of different trucks, and the game is sort of like an RPG where you have to earn money by completing missions, and then make improvements to your truck, and then make it easier to make further progress in different mission types and terrain types. So if the physics of this game look a bit familiar, it's because the physics engine is developed from the same game as Mud Runner and Spin Tires. And whether you find this game fun is really going to depend if you like vehicle simulation games, if you're the kind of guy that likes playing a game like Euro Truck Simulator, for example. Anyway, check this game out if this is your idea of a fun game. <laughs> So next up is Terra Nil. So this is an indie strategy video game. You as a player are tasked with turning a barren wasteland into an ecological paradise using technology like toxin scrubbers and these wind turbines. Basically the task is to plant as much grass as possible and turn the landscape into this lush ecosystem. So there's a careful management of all of the game's resources and placement. So you have to be quite strategic with how you place all of the water, energy, seed planters, rocks, rivers, etc. And then what happens at the end is that you have to recycle the buildings in order to create an airship in order to leave the map. And the goal is to leave behind this rewilded paradise. So I describe this game as a very relaxed strategy game. So it's all kind of turn-based. There's no real-time elements as far as I can tell. And you can undo actions all the way back to the beginning. So basically it's a strict kind of puzzle game. So you have to unfold the map bit by bit. If you make a mistake, you can basically undo and then repeat the process, which you're inevitably gonna to have to do in order to maximize the resource points that you can get from any particular map. Anyway, there's something kind of relaxing about playing this game with its satisfying visuals and sounds and music, and it all comes together as a complete satisfying experience. So next up is Sonic Dream Team. So this is the only game on the list which I can say today I would describe as a Mac exclusive. So this has been released on Mac OS, iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV as well. And it comes as part of an Apple TV subscription. So you can basically subscribe once and play it on all of the devices with cloud syncing saves enabled. So basically this is your standard 3D Sonic game, a bit like Sonic Adventure. There's a whole bunch of platforming, running, puzzle solving, and combat. The whole game takes place inside Dr. Eggman's dreams, and the game features six different playable characters, all with different abilities. 
Anyway, the graphics are deceptively simple, but they do allow for extremely high frame rates, especially on lower end devices. So your lower end Mac is going to be covered by this game quite easily as it will run on a lower end iPhone too. So anyway, I highly recommend checking this out. Even if you just subscribe to Apple Arcade for just a month, you can probably finish this game quite easily and check out the rest of the Apple Arcade library, of which there are a few hidden gems, especially on the Mac side. So next up is the game Firmament, which is an adventure game developed by Siren Worlds, who are famous for the creation of the game Myst. So if you're familiar with that type of game, it's basically this first person puzzle game. You wake up in this mysterious bunker with no memories and you're confronted by this weird ghost who asks you to pick up this device called the adjunct, which allows you to basically interact with all of the puzzles in the game. And the idea is that you raise control spires in each of the three realms, solving puzzles to unlock new areas of the environment to visit. So whether you like this kind of game will really depend on if you like these kind of slow paced puzzle games like Myst. What makes this game a little bit more engaging, I'd say, is the fact that we have this mentor character who basically voices dialogue in the background and directs you to new areas. And there's an interesting overarching storyline which takes place with a few twists and turns. So if you like this kind of puzzle game, then make sure to check this out. So the last game on this list is Resident Evil 4 Remake. So this is probably the most exciting Mac title of the entire year, and it's been optimized for Apple Silicon chips. So it'll play nicely on iPhone, iPad, and it's been designed specifically to run on Mac. So you're gonna be able to buy it once and then play it on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac and synchronize your progress using iCloud. So at the time of recording, this game hasn't been released yet, but once it does, I'll be sure to make some kind of video documenting its technical performance on Macs. So make sure to check out the other videos on my YouTube channel for further news. I expect Resident Evil 4 to perform really well on the Mac as the previous entry Resident Evil Village is one of the best most optimized games for Apple Silicon hardware. So bonus games. So this is the medium. So I haven't really played much of this particular game. So this footage actually comes from a YouTube channel called Mac Pro Tips, who does a fantastic job benchmarking Mac games. I'll leave a link in the description for his YouTube channel. Make sure to check it out and subscribe. So basically this game is made by Bluebird, who are the same studio that made Layers of Fear. And this is basically another horror game, but this time it's third person. One of the more unique features is the fact that you can kind of enter the spirit realm at the same time as the physical realm. Realm. So basically the game will split into two simultaneous scenes at once, which can be quite demanding on any kind of computer. You can see the frame rates drop quite dramatically here, but it's quite a cool effect. Make sure to check this out if you're a fan of these horror puzzle games. So next up, we're looking at another bonus game, Fort Solace. So this is a science fiction horror adventure game. So this is a bonus game because I think that this is a very poor port universally regarded as not very good for the Mac. Here it's being run at low graphics settings with metal effects set to performance mode and even with these low graphics settings the game struggles at 30 to 40 fps even at 1080p on the m1 max chip one of the more expensive computer chips that you can buy on a mac so anyway if you're running this on a higher end mac this might be a worthwhile experience hopefully they're going to clean up this mac port in the future but i wouldn't count on it so last bonus game is alex 2 so a lot of people asked about this because it was heavily featured in the apple keynote this is an action role-playing game created by piranha bytes who also made the original gothic games i've not played this game myself but I've heard it described as a little bit clunky. Unfortunately it's only available on the Mac App Store so I'll check it out once it goes on sale. So anyway this has been my list of the best Mac games of 2023. If you think I left anything out there make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.